call Sue Kedgley. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, well, the Green Party too considers that the Television New Zealand Amendment Bill is a shocking piece of legislation which will strip Television New Zealand not just of its charter but of any public service obligations or responsibility. It will turn Television New Zealand into a nakedly commercial broadcaster focused solely on uh, chasing ratings and advertising revenues and which will be indistinguishable from any other commercial broadcaster. Once this bill is passed, it will exist for the sole purpose of returning a dividend to government and it will not be expected to deliver anything other than a profit uh, to the government. In fact, when the Minister was asked what exactly is the point of the government owning a television channel, two channels, which have no public service functions or responsibilities, which are solely commercial, and the Minister answered, well, it will have a, a valuable role in returning a profit to the shareholder. In other words, the government will own two television channels for the sole purpose of extracting uh, money from them. It is extraordinary. Now, the Green Party was the first to admit that the previous dual mandate of TVNZ was not a great success, but at least the Charter spelt out explicitly and unequivocally that TVNZ was expected to be a public service broadcaster to serve the public interest, to have high quality uh, news and current affairs and so forth. But once this bill is passed, there will be no obligation on TVNZ to provide impartial news and current affairs, to screen documentaries, to screen any television, uh, children's television programmes, to screen any drama or minority programmes. Indeed, there will be no obligation on TVNZ to even screen New Zealand programmes, and we can expect to see fewer and fewer New Zealand programmes on TVNZ for the simple reason, as others have pointed out, that it's far more expensive to produce New Zealand programmes than it is to import cheap programmes from overseas. And that's why on TV2 we've got 17% New Zealand content, 83% cheap foreign programmes. Basically, TV2 is just uh, an, an uh, offshore channel and uh, this is what TV1 will become. And it's also, of course, the same reason why T the uh, government refused to fund $15 million a year to continue with TV7. Uh, uh, the government, uh, or TVNZ, the board told us that they put a case to the government to continue to fund TV7. They were turned down flat by this government because it is, has, it is not interested, it doesn't understand, it doesn't care about public service television. It wants TVNZ to be a solely commercial broadcaster. And of course, once this bill is passed, we will be the only country in the Western world which doesn't have a mainstream public service uh, television broadcaster. As the, uh, there's a campaign, Save TVNZ, it said every self-respecting democracy in the world funds a public television broadcaster. In Europe, every government is funding one. Most of the governments in Asia, the Middle East, in Africa are funding uh, public service television everywhere except New Zealand. And why do they fund them? Because they invest in public service television because they understand that public service television is essential not just for our national identity, but for a healthy democracy, for an informed society. Public service television promotes ideas and perspectives that are ignored in uh, to com commercially driven, uh, ratings driven commercial television. In commercial television, ratings are the only, the sole measure of success of a program, whereas in public service uh, television, programs are also driven by the public interest and not just ratings. The most galling thing of all is that at the same time, the very time that the government is stripping Television New Zealand of any public service obligations, 
It is bailing out its mates. It is subsidising its mates in uh, Media Works, the company, of course, uh, set up by, uh, by Stephen Joyce. Uh, with, with, in fact, it is, of course, TVNZ's uh, commercial competitor. It is effectively uh, funding it, subsidising it uh, by $43 million with a loan deferral scheme. Uh, and I learned from uh, the previous speaker, Claire Curran, that the minister has met nine times with the Board of Media Works. This is, uh, this is shocking. It went against, the minister, the government, uh, went against the advice of Treasury uh, and of the Ministry of Economic Development in extending the loan to Media Works. They said the government was effectively acting as a bank for Media Works in deferring its uh, loan. Uh, but uh, at the same time, so it can extend $43 million in a subsidy to uh, the commercial, well, to, to uh, Media Works, but it can't afford $15 million uh, for TV7. Now, the Minister has yet to outline any clear uh, broadcasting strategy, but it's clear that the underlying strategy is to fully commercialise TVNZ to ready it for sale uh, in the next term of government. That was the agenda back in the 90s, uh, and now we're here to finish off the unfinished business and to sell off TVNZ, and anyone who thinks uh, any uh, otherwise, I think, is being naive. Now, another agenda of TVNZ appears to be to move away from free-to-air television into pay television. So it seems that the government is wanting us to, to really um, to remove free-to-air television and just have uh, pay TV. We were told in the select committee that the main growth area uh, for TVNZ, for the business, is expected to be in pay TV, and it plans to pitch even more channels than it already is to Sky TV. Uh, Television New Zealand is openly courting Sky, which has a 50% market share. It has launched the Heartland Channel exclusively to, to Sky. Then it's announced it's going to be producing a 24-hour channel for preschool uh, kids on Sky, and it's looking at further opportunities. And indeed, the head of digital services for TVNZ, Eric Curley, he said... There's been a lot of talk about media revolutions, but the real revolution has been a move from ad-funded TV to pay TV. Now, at the select committee, we said, surely if TVNZ is now mainly focused and all its growth is now focused on developing channels for pay TV, surely that is undermining the whole free-to-air TV. It must be undermining it. But that, it is clear that this, this is the agenda here. Uh, Sky, uh, and, and the problem, the agenda here is to move us along uh, into uh, pay TV. The problem is that Sky Television, it provides almost no local content apart from sport. It is prohibitively expensive and probably as many, as some estimates, as many as two million New Zealanders will not be able to afford to buy a Sky subscription. So why are we moving, why is this government moving to, um, to switch to pay TV uh, away from free-to-air television? And, um, and of course, in ditching uh, Television 7, uh, what is going to be the point of people like um, myself uh, who have invested in the Freeview, uh, the, the Freeview uh, platform? There'll be no channels apart from one and two to watch. And so, of course, once again, once TV7 uh, has been ditched, next year, uh, everyone, you know, the, all the incentive will be to move more and more to Sky. And this does seem to be uh, the government's agenda. And it's interesting that um, I was reminded, someone recently reminded me that um, the Hollow Men uh, revealed a discreet but direct relationship between Murdoch, senior, and one of his sons and key insider advisers in the Brash campaign. And so it's interesting that at the very same time that we had Mr Brash resurfacing in New Zealand, to, as someone said, to strip New Zealand of our remaining assets, at that very same time we have uh, the government uh, with its sky-friendly policies uh, moving to, uh, to 
it seems, to promote, tele- uh, to promote uh, switch TV to pay TV and away from free-to-air TV. And I note that the government is about to allow Sky TV to access government funding. So this is all part of its agenda. We can only hope that Sorry Radio to interrupt the Honourable Member. Uh, won't the time go in the expired. same direction. Speaker. I call Rahui Kartani. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Just over two years ago, 